Hey guys, it's Channel Heat here. How's everyone doing today? So, many of you in the PC gaming community probably know this, but pretty much like all modern Intel CPUs now come with this new uh, hybrid architecture with a mix of P cores and E cores, performance cores and efficiency cores. And pretty much since the beginning with Intel's 12th gen processors, the Alder Lake processors, uh, people have had mixed reactions to the whole um, efficiency cores and performance cores thing. What about a PC with a CPU that comes with only E cores from the very beginning? No, like no need to have to, to no need to disable the P cores or anything to test out the E cores. Just pure E cores. Well, that's where this little mini PC I have comes in. So this PC is the Camry E1. In fact, the folks at Camry were nice enough to send this to me to review. So we'll be doing that for this video, but we'll also be doing some uh, fun experiments on this to test out that question of how good are E-cores, especially for a CPU that was dedicated to just E-cores from the ground up. So the Camry E1, it is a mini PC, it's quite small here, and this particular model they sent me for the E1 uh, comes with uh, a black color shell, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a one terabyte SSD. Pretty good specs for the price you get. In fact, there's a sale going on on Amazon right now with a coupon, which brings this down to just around $200. So for $200, this is not a bad price for this mini PC, but how does it actually hold up? All right, so this mini PC comes with an Intel N97 processor. Like I said, it is an E-Core only processor, but it's actually on the uh, slightly higher end of Intel's E-Core only processors. So the N97, it's actually more powerful than the N100, and even more powerful than Intel's N150 processor from their newer Twin Lake series. So this, uh, this should be a pretty decent CPU. Now we'll be testing this out with gaming, but keep in mind, this mini PC is marketed as for home and office use. But, of course, this is a gaming channel, so we will be seeing how well this processor can actually handle gaming. Because I'm sure it handles home and office use just fine. So, I'm more interested in seeing how well this can tackle modern games and classic games. So, let's get right into it. Alright, so, the first game we'll be testing on this is the classic Geometry Wars Retro Evolved. This is a classic twin stick shooter game, but it's also not that old of a game. It's actually a pretty fun game to play, and it runs very well on this. In fact, games like these are probably like what's perfect to run on uh, this mini PC. And it does run well, as long as you keep anti-aliasing off. Uh, when I turned that on, even at 1080p, it did struggle at a few moments. Uh, but that wasn't an issue with the newer Geometry Wars 3. I'm guessing like Geometry Wars 3 is probably better optimized than the original Geometry Wars. Uh, you may not think like games like these need like a lot of optimizations, but clearly uh, it does actually make a difference, especially on uh, more like edge cases like this mini PC when it comes to hardware. But yeah, I mean Geometry Wars 3 runs great as well and I could pretty much keep it at like high settings. Um, next up we'll try Halo 3. Another game from 2007, although it is improved in MCC, so it'll probably be a little bit more demanding. So let's see how well Halo 3 runs on this mini PC with only E cores. So right now, let's uh, load right here on this part of the mission. I, uh, I have the game set to the default settings for graphics. I could go a little bit lower in the settings, but that wasn't really necessary with Halo 3. It runs fairly smooth uh, at the default settings. I did not turn up the high though. It's uh, it probably won't run as well at that setting. But the default settings, you can see here the game runs pretty well. Uh, it might like stutter like every now and then here, but for the most part, Halo 3 is very playable. And if you really want to get like that extra you know few FPS out of this, you could turn it down to the lowest setting. But other than that, like Halo 3 on MCC is very playable. Uh, next up, let's try a little bit more demanding game on MCC, which is Halo 2 Anniversary. In Anniversary graphics, even at minimum settings, it is uh, barely playable. <laughs> uh, it, you can kind of play it, but the frame rate is pretty rough. Of course, if you switch to classic graphics, it's an instant like improvement in frame rate. Like 
huge night and day difference. This mini PC can barely run anniversary graphics at a playable frame rate at minim minimum graphics settings, but for classic graphics, you can like set it to like the max settings and you'll it'll be fine in classic mode. In fact, the frame rate is like super smooth, but in anniversary it's very choppy, but kind of still playable. Although I really wouldn't recommend you playing uh, anniversary graphics on this. So just for fun, let's toss the most modern Halo game on this. Let's try Halo Infinite. <laughs> um, so after a while waiting to load, once we get to the main menu, it's uh, it's pretty yikes. Uh, this mini PC is definitely not meant to run on Halo Infinite at all, and you can see why too. Um, you, it, like just on the main menu, like it just doesn't look right at all. And then when I try to load the multiplayer map, the map in the background looks even worse, and it doesn't even give me the gameplay. It just actually crashes after like a minute. However, campaign I can get into, <laughs> but you can see the graphics for campaign can be pretty funny on the main menu, like look at Chief's armor here. Um, it's just taking so long for the shaders to finally load in, so a lot of things just load as like low poly or low detail. But when you can finally get into the campaign, you know, it's actually surprisingly kind of playable. Well, I, I use the term playable very loosely, like, like in cutscenes and even gameplay, you're running at like 15, 20 FPS at best, which, um, you know, you could maybe play it at that, but it's not ideal at all. Alright, so that about wraps up for this video. As you can see, this mini PC, it does pack a decent punch uh, for the price you get and for its form factor. Like, I never expected this to be like some super powerful gaming PC. Uh, it's, it's definitely meant for more... Um, low performance tasks like home and office, which is what it's advertised as doing. But e even for gaming, because it uses one of the more powerful E-Core only CPUs that Intel has, it actually handles some older games, uh, some more retro games uh, decently well. You still can't really like, you know, run them at max settings, <laughs> like even Geometry Wars uh, at max settings would struggle. But you could actually play like MCC Halo games like relatively well, especially if you lower the performance settings a little bit. So if you wanted to use this as like a lightweight or even like a portable almost gaming machine, even though it's not really advertised as that, you probably could. Uh, so it, it's, um, I would say like the best use, case, use cases for this, aside from home and office, uh, the best gaming use cases would be, you know, if you wanted to like do cloud streaming, this would handle that just fine. Or if you want to do like, emulation em emulating older games this will probably handle that just fine too and like i said it's one of the more powerful e-core only cpus so it should have enough performance to handle most emulators uh newer emulators like newer consoles like xbox 360 or ps3 or like a ps4 emulator probably not gonna run fine on this but you know older games retro games emulators this is a really great uh you know machine for that a little mini console for light gaming, retro gaming, or cloud streaming. So if uh, you were looking for like a mini PC for stuff like that, or you did want to use it for home and office tasks, uh, it's, not a bad, it's not a bad option. Uh, if you want to check it out, I will put the link in the description below. Like I said, they are running a little bit of a sale on it right now, so it's a pretty good time to uh, check it out if you're interested. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys found this to be interesting, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys!